why should we care about young males of color? So I think about this question all the time as a black man, a father of two young black boys, and my boys are, they're energetic, they're lively, they're enthusiastic, but it pains me that many members of society are gonna look at them as criminal and demonize them and not give them the benefit of the doubt because they're black. So obviously my wife and I wanna provide sort of the best educational environment for them so they can succeed. So we'll be telling them things that my mother once told me. Life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Your attitude determines your altitude. But what really resonates uh, with me with what she said is that being black, you have to work twice as hard for half the credit. So I think about my boys, three and five, one in preschool, one in kindergarten. So they're at the beginning phases of this preschool to college pipeline, also known as the P-16 sort of pipeline. But I'm also reminded of this narrative, this other narrative of black and brown males, and that's the school to prison pipeline. So let's talk about these two pipelines. One starts in preschool, ends up with a college degree. The other starts in preschool or kindergarten and end up in jail. So what do we do about that? How do we make sense of that? Well, for many black and brown males, the school to prison pipeline is airtight. In fact, there are more black males in prison than there were enslaved in 1850. There are more black males in the criminal justice system than we have in college today. So my goal is to address that, that pipeline, but in addition, let's talk about the P-16 pipeline for a second. That's really, really leaky, very leaky many points of departure. And in many cases, black and brown males, we don't foster the college-going culture for them. So my goal is to have as many black and brown males to the top part of this slide versus the bottom part. And here we have a teacher talking to a young man, telling him about, you know, these predominant narratives. So let me tell you how we're gonna address this at the University of Washington. We're gonna do that through the Brotherhood Initiative. And this is something that I'm co-leading with a diverse group of faculty, staff, students, and community members. And it's an access, retention, and graduation initiative for five cultural groups of males. African American, Latino, American Indian, Pacific Islander, and Southeast Asian. And our goal is to wrap a four plus year framework around them. Now that's not suggesting that they're gonna take longer than four years to graduate, but before they even get to the University of Washington, we're gonna be engaging with their families and communities to let them know that the University of Washington is a part of your community. I'm gonna tell you a bit about the conditions of success that we're gonna to create to make this happen. We're gonna facilitate peer-to-peer -peer mentoring, leadership development, study abroad, civic engagement. So in the end, we're gonna have a graduate that's not only competent in subject matter, but also socially conscious and civically engaged. And we're gonna to try to plug as many of those holes in the P-16 pipeline as possible. So why should we care about males of color? Quite frankly, I think it's our moral imperative to do so. We have to dismantle the school to prison pipeline 
we have to widen and strengthen the P16 pipeline and make it as airtight as a school to prison pipeline. And the Brotherhood Initiative is just one step in that direction. Thank you.